Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system. It's the fifth planet from the sun. It's also the planet with the most mass. It's a gas giant with a mass that's about two and a half times that of all the other planets in the solar system combined, but just slightly less than one one thousandth that of the sun. After the moon and Venus, Jupiter's the third brightest natural object in the night sky of Earth. People have been able to see it since prehistoric times. The name of this place comes from Jupiter, the most important god in ancient Roman mythology. Jupiter is mostly made up of hydrogen, but helium makes up one-tenth of its volume and one-quarter of its mass. It probably has a rocky core made of heavy elements, but it doesn't have a well-defined solid surface like other big planets in the solar system. Jupiter's temperature is going up because the planet's interior is continuing to shrink, which gives off more heat than it gets from the sun. Because of how quickly it spins, the planet has the shape of an oblate spheroid. Because of this, there's a small but noticeable bulge around the planet's equator. There are a number of latitudinal bands in the upper atmosphere, and rough weather forms along the edges where these bands meet up. The Great Red Spot, a huge storm that's been traced back to at least 1831, is one of the most well-known effects of this event. Jupiter's surrounded on all sides by a strong magnetosphere and a set of barely visible rings. The planet's magnetic tail stretches for close to 800 million kilometers, which is about 500 million miles or 5.3 astronomical units. This is almost the whole distance to Saturn's orbit. Galileo Galilei found Jupiter's four biggest moons in 1610. They are Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Scientists think that Jupiter has a lot more moons than the 84 we know about right now. Ganymede is a lot bigger than the planet Mercury, and Callisto is a little bit smaller than Ganymede. Io and Europa are about the same size as Earth's moon. Pioneer 10 was the first spacecraft of its kind to go to Jupiter. In December of 1973, it came the closest to Earth. Since then, many robotic spacecraft have gone to Jupiter. The Pioneer and Voyager flyby missions, which happened between 1973 and 1979, and the Galileo Orbiter, which was launched in 1995, are just two examples. In 2007, New Horizons stopped at Jupiter. While there, it used Jupiter's gravity to speed up and change its path so it would eventually get to Pluto. Juno was the last spacecraft to visit Jupiter. It went into orbit around the planet in July 2016. One place that could be studied in the Jupiter system in the future is the moon Europa, which almost certainly has a frozen ocean below its surface. The NASA spacecraft Juno is getting closer to the end of a very successful mission, but it has a few surprises up its sleeve. Many missions are planned for Jupiter in the coming years, with many of them focusing on Jupiter's four largest moons, known as the Galilean moons. So, let's talk about Jupiter's moons for a minute. Let's look at why they're sometimes more beautiful than Jupiter itself, and why scientists value them enough to send new spacecraft to study them. Io, one of the Galilean moons. Io is the fourth and smallest of the Galilean moons. It's also the solar system's fourth largest moon, despite having the highest density and fewest water molecules of any known celestial object. With over 400 active volcanoes on its surface, this massive moon is the most geologically active object in the solar system. Tidal heating induced by friction is responsible for this geological action. The friction is created by Jupiter's gravitational force on the other larger moons. Io is tidally locked to Jupiter and revolves around it in 1.77 Earth days. Io is larger than our moon with a mean radius of 1,131 miles or 1,821 kilometers. Io's volcanoes spew plumes 500 kilometers or 300 miles above the surface. This moon is primarily composed of silicate rock that surrounds a molten iron core. Ganymede. Ganymede is Jupiter's biggest moon and the solar system's largest moon overall. This moon dwarfs the planet Mercury in size. Ganymede has a radius of 2,634 kilometers or 1,636 miles and a diameter of 5,268 kilometers or 3,273 miles. Ganymede has the solar system's lowest inertia factor for any solid body. Ganymede is Jupiter's seventh moon, and it takes seven days to complete one round around its parent body. Ganymede is composed of equal parts silicate rock and water ice. It has an iron-rich liquid core and an interior ocean that may contain more water than all of Earth's water combined. 
Europa. Europa is Jupiter's most famous moon. It's the sixth largest moon in the solar system and the smallest Galilean moon. Europa, which is smaller than our moon, has a diameter of 3,100 kilometers or 1,900 miles and is largely comprised of silicate rock, has a water ice crust, and most likely an iron nickel core. Europa's atmosphere is mostly composed of oxygen, and its surface is the smoothest of any known solid object. Because it most likely has an underground water ocean, this moon has the highest likelihood of having or producing life. Callisto Callisto is Jupiter's second largest natural satellite and the solar system's third largest moon. Callisto has a diameter of approximately 4,821 kilometers or 2,995 miles and a mass one-third that of Mercury. It's Jupiter's least affected moon in terms of the gas giant's massive magnetosphere. This moon may also have an underground ocean of liquid water, but more proof is needed. It has the lowest density of Jupiter's moons and the oldest and most extensively cratered surface in the solar system. Callisto's atmosphere is composed of molecular oxygen and carbon dioxide. Many people believe that Callisto is the greatest place to create a base. This is due to the fact that this moon is the least radiated of the Galilean moons. More of Jupiter's satellites. Even though Jupiter has 79 moons, 63 of them are smaller than 10 kilometers in diameter or 6.2 miles. The regular moons of Jupiter are made up of the Galilean moons and a group of four smaller moons in the middle. Each of these moons is less than 200 kilometers or 124 miles in diameter and have an orbital radius of less than 200,000 kilometers or 124,274 miles. The tilts of these moons' orbits add up to less than half a degree for all of them. Scientists think that the Galilean moons formed at the same time as their parent planet, Jupiter, because their orbits are nearly circular and lie close to the plane of Jupiter's equator. Jupiter's irregular moons are the other moons that orbit Jupiter. They're not very big, and their orbits around their parent planet are elliptical and tilted. Because most of them are thought to be captured asteroids, it's impossible to know how many of them there are. Some of these asteroids may have crashed into each other, making smaller moons. It's likely that Jupiter's oddly shaped moons came from a larger moon that mysteriously disappeared. This is the theory behind the idea that all of these moons have a common ancestor. They could be the pieces of a dwarf planet that broke apart. Because Jupiter's gravity is so strong, it wouldn't be hard for it to swallow up smaller planets as well. After all, each of the Galilean moons is much bigger than any of the dwarf planets. There are many missions planned to go to Jupiter in the near future, and most of them will focus on the moons of the planet. There's a good chance that we'll learn more about the Jovian system, and it's even possible that we'll find moons that we didn't know about before. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.